What did you like and not like about scrimmage? Um, I really liked the effort. I, I, I told the players this. I thought that, like most scrimmages, we have a lot of loafs the first time, and it's like sloppy. Um, but I, I really liked the effort. Like the special teams, we challenged them to, to not have loafs on special teams. We probably had a few, but we had some really special extra efforts. Um, the gunners, the holdups, they had great battles. Like a lot of times people think that's a playoff. And, I thought our guys, like we had high speeds on our GPS in our special teams units. So I was very pleased with that. Um, uh, we didn't tackle well, which when you don't tackle live a lot, we, we try to prevent a lot of injuries. Um, we don't tackle live a lot until we go over to the uh, stadium. So we probably didn't tackle as well as I would like. Uh, we didn't execute real well on third down on defense. Um, you know, there's a lot to be cleaned up, but I was, uh, I was pleased with the effort, and that, that to me is like number one. If you don't have effort, you don't have a chance. And we did have uh, a good effort. There were some big collisions. There were two or three really good physical hits like on both sides of the ball. So I liked, I liked the, the fact that the players were, they were into it, they were energized. People were on the sidelines cheering. It was not a uh, ho-hum type, type day. Kirby, you're a little bit past halfway in the spring. Just what have you learned about this group as a whole, and, and what do you still want to see and what's left, and then even going into G-Day? Yeah, we have a long way to go in some position groups to get where we need to get. But what I've been very pleased with thus far is I don't feel like we've had uh, a poor practice. You know, we've had really good energy, um, a lot of really good teaching and learning, which especially the positions that we're young at, that's what you need. You need to teach, learn, get them reps. It's so valuable to get young players reps in the spring. They learn from mistakes. They have to make a mistake a certain amount of times to get it. And we're going through those those growing pains right now. You know, we're sitting there going through them. So I've been very pleased with uh, that part of the spring. Um, but we're not like, we're just we're just not where we need to be. We're, we, we, don't, you know, we don't have enough depth in some positions. And, uh, but the guys are fighting. You know, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of injured guys. I'm, I'm talking about guys that are not like injured because of spring ball. That are not in spring ball. So we're trying to find innovative, creative ways to keep them involved. Scripts on the practice field, walkthroughs for them. Give them reps. Give a hurt guy a rep against a hurt guy because there's a good chance they don't hurt each other. So uh, we're just trying to be creative. Coach, I know we ask you this all, all the time, this time of year, but did any of the early enrollees kind of catch your eye on Saturday? Hard to really single anybody out. Uh, nobody really, I mean, if I do, y'all will anoint them. I mean, y'all just write them <laughs> just, just like y'all are going to do anyway. I mean, y'all take word of mouth. There was stuff written about guys in the scrimmage that was so far from the truth, but I, whatever. I mean, I think those guys are coming along. I can't sit here and say that, that any, you know, one, not, not mid-year-wise. Uh, like guys that, that stood out or anything. We, we, we got, uh, it was there, a little bit of anxiety for those guys because first time in the stadium, first time going live, we, we built it up just for that reason because they're sure enough we're gonna have anxiety in the fall when we play Oregon. So we, we, wanna, we wanna build that up, simulate that, see how they respond to it. The more times you get to that crescendo, the less negative effect it has. So I thought those guys, battle through, made some mistakes, and hopefully we'll see a jump this week. I'm curious about uh, both linebacker positions inside India. We, we've talked about Pop. We, uh, we know Robert and Nolan are kind of known commodities. What about other guys that might be standing out this way? We're just really young. I mean, we don't we, – uh, you say stand out. I mean, there's nobody that stands out, not compared to, to what just left that room. Um, Nobody like that. There's guys uh, filling a role, and there's a difference. You know, there's a standard at Georgia when you play inside backer and outside backer, and we're probably not playing to that standard right now. But it's not because they're not trying hard enough, and it's uh, not because they're not talented enough. It's because they don't have the experience in the reps, and we're catching up on that every day as fast as we can. Sori's taking a lot of reps, and he's got a long way to go. Um, Jalen Walker's taking a lot of reps. He's got a long way to go. Um, and Tresman, 
um, is injured and he's he's you know he's hurt he's got a knee and he's he's on a pitch count he's on a number of reps but he's able to go some with the ones and help us out but an outside backer Chaz and MJ have gotten a lot of work Marlon Dean's gotten a lot of work um, with with Nolan and, and Beal there. What have you seen out of Jackson Meeks' progression in the past two years? Well, Jackson's growing. He's getting better. I, I, don't, I don't feel like he's been here two years. Maybe he has, but it seems like he's been here for a shorter time than that. But um, he's got to get to where he can help us on special teams. He's got to be who he is. He's really physical, strong. Um, you know, he had some, some balls he probably should have caught the other day. He'd be the first to tell you, but he also made a couple plays. So, uh, when that happens, I just look for more consistency and uh, contribution on special teams. Where does Buster fall in the organization, and how has his role evolved in his time at Georgia? Uh, number one, he brings a great recruiting value, an in-state uh, presence that a lot of high school coaches in the state respect for Buster. He did a tremendous job as an offensive coordinator at several places. Um, uh, really good knowledge of uh, our system. Um, he's grown as a coach within our organization. Uh, he's a tremendous help to the coaches because that's what he does. He gets to coach the coaches. But he also establishes relationships in recruiting. He spends time, uh, you know, when he can, supporting our quarterbacks and supporting that position. And he supports Coach Munkin. And I think the one thing that he's, he's been really good at is he's, he's kind of known his role. And he's done his role really well. And uh, he's, he's been a big asset uh, for me because he's coached a lot of places. Yeah, Kirk, at this time last year, you know, Lad McConkey was a guy that we hadn't really heard of and, and necessarily wasn't a guy expected to, to have a huge role in the fall. I mean, have you seen a difference in him this spring, sort of with him stepping into a big role among receivers? Yeah, he's much more confident. Uh, he makes a lot of plays. Uh, he made some plays in the scrimmage the other day. He's he's tough. He's elusive. He plays really hard. Um, and uh, just, you know, he's, he's what you want in your program because – Every play, he gives you everything he's got. There's, a, there's like this level of consistency with the lab that you know you're going to get his very best every day. If anything, you have to be careful how hard you work him because he, he'll do exactly what you tell him to do. He, he, he'll, he'll run himself until his, his, his tongue hangs out and he loses his juice because uh, he's certainly uh, better with juice. Yeah, you talked about Jalen Carter growing as a leader, but what are the areas just as a player that you want to see the most improvement? Just consistency. I think I think we he and I have talked about stamina and you know, he has flash plays and he's really athletic and just, you know, playing with consistent effort because the talent is just oozing. It's a matter of can he play every play with maximum intensity and be able to sustain. You know, he, he was in a he was in a Three man weave triangle last year, and you know it was easy to sub him because you weren't having a big drop off when he went off the field. We need him to play more snaps this year. We need him to be on the field. We need him to be active. We need him to be able to play first, second, third in a row, not first, second, and then some thirds. So can he do that? Can he go through all season workouts and put himself in a position to be like Trevon from a stamina standpoint? And, and Devonte works so hard in practice that Devonte could play any number of snaps and still be fresh. Uh, we got to get Jalen to be able to do that and uh, and lead, you know, set an example for the other players. Kirby, you had the uh, spring of COVID with Todd Munkin his first year, and now you've had almost two full springs with him providing consistency. What does that consistency bring for your offense? A plan. You know, I think a big part of offense is, is like, have an identity, believe in who you are, don't try to force your players into that. Uh, I'll, I'll be, you know, be strong where you're strong and improve your weaknesses. Well, he knows what he wants to do. He knows how to package plays that uh, that, that, that work well together. Um, you know, be, be who you are. And if your strength is at wide out, if your strength is at O-line, your strength is at tight end, your strength is at running back, your strength is at quarterback, use it. And um, I think he's done a good job of bringing consistency in those areas and accountability to that side of the ball. How are you looking for a lad to improve or to evolve his game in year two, both as a slot receiver and as a returner? Make more explosive plays, uh, take care of his body in the summer, lift, put more muscle mass on, 
you know, he's in really good shape usually, but it's more a matter of uh, protecting himself because um, he can get beat up. You know, he's not a real big guy. So uh, the more he protects himself and grows and, and be explosive and run after the catch is what we need out of Lad. You know, from being able to um, be really good at perimeter blocking when we're throwing the balls to the outside, something he's got to work on. But I think he's going to be explosive and a playmaker. Kirby, in your mind, do you guys have a good um, understanding of what you have behind Stetson at quarterback? And is there a separation between Beck and Vandegrift? All those guys have done a tremendous job. I mean, uh, Stets has taken some really good quality reps here in the scrimmage. Um, he's been really consistent this spring. You know, he's very comfortable. It just, you know, when things break down, he, he doesn't have to go make a play. Like he used to think he had to go make a play. He, he makes a good throw or he runs the ball. And, and usually those are two really good positive things that Stets has done. Uh, he's been really consistent this spring doing that. He, does, he, he You know, he doesn't have the snafus that, that, that we used to have just because he tried to force the ball. He hasn't done that. Um, it's come with ease to him. The other two guys have gotten a lot of work uh, with both the ones and twos. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased with both where those guys are. I mean, it's just amazing how far they've come from this time last year to right now. It's like, oh my God. I mean, it's just Brock probably even further. You know, he was a little bit younger. And Carson didn't get that COVID spring. So they really are both in their, uh, I guess, they're, they're really their second spring. Right, but but they've come so far, and uh, you know I, I love getting to watch them play with both those groups because you, you see their strengths uh, when they get to go with those groups, and so you know we're in a good position at that position, and each one of them is developing. Yeah, Curry, I was going to follow up and ask you how Stetson has has met the challenge. I mean, you don't publicly challenge people by accident. How has he responded? One and two. What do you look for in the scrimmage this weekend as far as what's next? scrimmage too typically. Yeah, I don't, you know, y'all made a big deal out of that. I don't I, I, It's like everything is blown out of proportion. I mean, I'm challenging him to do exactly what every player is challenged to do, right? Be the best leader, go to class, make good decisions. I mean, that's not real far-fetched for anybody, but somehow it gets spun into Stetson's like in this doghouse or something. I didn't say any of those things. So I, I think it gets misled and, and like misconstrued because when I challenge somebody, I challenge somebody every day. So Stetson has, has uh, really, he's just taken on the role we've asked him to do. He's been a, a good leader. He's playing the best football he's played since being here. Um, and he continues to get better. So, I mean, I, I want to see him continue to do that. And I, I want him to continue to get reps so he gets growth. But getting those other two guys reps is critical too. So we, we do a lot of strategic work on reps to make sure those guys are getting better and getting opportunities. Scrimmage too? Yeah, uh, scrimmage too. I mean, I want, I want to see him continue to get better. I mean, it's like make good decisions. Can you do it consistently? You know, can you make plays consistently? If things break down, he, he made two or three plays in the scrimmage with his feet that I don't know I don't know how many guys can make where he's elusive. Now, he's not live, so it's hard to measure that. But, um, you know, it, it, it'll be play within the offense, play within the system. Stetson's not – we're not going to go out there and run the guy 35 times and rush for 300 yards. So, I mean, he's got to play quarterback. He's got to deal the ball and get it to the right – Playmakers around him, and right now we're not even playing with a fully loaded, you know, offensive gun. So he's having to do it with the guys we got. I think he's doing a good job of that. With the with the wide receiver room changing so much this offseason, are you seeing any uh, connections between Stetson and the quarterbacks, particularly with the scrimmage having ha happened this past weekend? I don't know. I never believe in that whole connection with a certain wideout. I mean, you better be connected with all of them because if they play two man on the one that you want to throw it to, you better get ready to throw it to the other guy. Right? I mean, like, if it's man-to-man -man and we get a choice, then you're going to make a decision on the guy that you think you'll win. But there's all kinds of coverages that are played, zone, man, matchup zone, that make you throw the ball to everybody, the back, the tight end. So, like, you better have – what we're trying to do is establish depth at wide receiver. So we're trying to get young players that are talented to go really far. So Denial and Morissette, he's a young player that's talented, but he's got a long way to go. You know, the same way at offensive line. We look at offensive line, and I'm like, man, look how far Amaris Mims has come. Man, look how far uh, this guy's grown and gotten better, Devin Willett. I mean, like, like, I want to see the players improve and not just gel. You know what I mean? Like, like improve your fundamentals and get better so that our team can be better. And we've got some guys, you know, that are getting better. I'm excited about that. They're probably not as good as you guys think they are. They might not be as good as they think they are. 
but they're getting better. We've got time for two more questions. Um, how have Kendall Milton and Kenny McIntosh sort of step into the lead running back role as well as like a leadership role at the position? Next man up. I mean, those guys have watched the example set by so many backs before them. I mean, whether it's DeAndre Swift, whether it's uh, James and Zamir, they watched two wonderful ambassadors for the University of Georgia do it the right way. If you can't follow that lead, then shame on you. And so far, both of them have been tremendous leaders, been positive. Uh, you know, we're, we're getting them work. We're getting Dejan work. We need some depth at that position. Um, we need some guys with some different skill sets. Uh, but I'm, I'm pleased with the work they're doing. They're not shying away from work. They're both tremendous special teams players. They have a major role on our offense when they go in the huddle and they look those old linemen in the eyes and they challenge them to, to, to get yards. And those guys respond to Kenny and Kendall. We'll have a chance to talk to Jack in a few minutes. Just what does it mean as a coach to have an experienced kicker coming back and knowing that you've got that? Uh, it's wonderful to have a guy that's kicked in a lot of big moments, right? I mean, he's hit some big kicks and big moments. He's a, a model of consistency in terms of the way he works about things. He's going to probably take on a burden here, Zirkle, in terms of kickoff that we have one of the most elite guys to probably ever play college football uh, that's gone. So he's going to he's going to have to step up because you, know, you guys just count that play like it doesn't count. You know, for us, it probably hadn't counted for the last two years because of the guy we had. It's going to count a whole lot more. So we need to step up and uh, and do that well and compete with Zirkle at that. Thanks. Okay, thank you.